So, since the left likes to take things out of context, we here on the right should also take things out of context. And luckily, libs of TikTok did just that when they pulled this clip of Doug Emhoff at his speech the other day. Listen carefully. Kamala did what Kamala always does. She just put her head down and she went to work. I'm <laughs> I'm sorry. That's that's inappropriate. That's inappropriate. I shouldn't. <laughs> I feel... <laughs> I feel bad for playing that one. Kamala did what Kamala always does. She just put her head down and she went to work. Yeah, what I feel the second time it, it took a little bit of the I don't feel as bad anymore. I don't feel because look, I didn't say it. Doug Emhoff said Doug Emhoff would know he's her husband. Kamala did what Kamala always does. She just put her head down and she went to work. What really makes it for me is the he does this with his hand. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, he also, <laughs> with <laughs> wow with husbands like that who needs joe biden huh who needs joe biden telling everybody that they're garbage the only garbage i see floating out there is his supporters who needs bill clinton out there saying we know the economy was better with donald trump but vote for kamala anyway or saying hey if you just secured the border lake and riley would be alive today who needs those guys when you've got a husband like Doug Emhoff behind you? Kamala did what Kamala always does. She just put her head down and she went to work. He went, <laughs> he played this other story. All right, I'll grow up now. He played this other, he told this other story about uh, Tim Walls, the, one of the creepiest guys who ever lived. And uh, listen, this is him. I guess this is them trying to get the masculine vote. They're trying to get the male vote. This is him talking about his very first ever bro hug with Tim Walls. Tim, when Kamala and Tim took the stage uh, together for the first time in Philadelphia just 14 and a half weeks ago, I, I met him that one time in Minnesota, but that was really the second time I met him. And I just got up on that stage and gave him the biggest bro hug in the world, because <laughs> that's the kind of guy he is. And I have to tell you, I got a lot of texts from some longtime friends and some family members and said, well, what's going on? You never hugged me like that. But I said, well, he's awesome. He's awesome. Look at that. Maybe if you were awesome. So Doug Emhoff gives Tim Walls a big bro hug, like so big that his friends and family members are like, dude, what's going on with you two? You never, you never hug me like that. And Doug Emhoff and Tim Walls, they're the guys that they have tasked with trying to get male, young male voters to vote for Kamala Harris. And he talked about how he talked about how young male voters were being lied to and that Donald Trump and Kid Rock and, and Dana White and Joe Rogan, they're not they don't care about you. That's not who you want to be. Don't trust those people, young men. What I what I talk to young men about who might be taken by the, you know, fun side of Donald Trump, so, such as it such as it is the dancing, the going to the wrestling matches, going on the podcasts, and and trying to portray himself as someone who he really is. And I think Cardi B called this out and said it's just all a hustle. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to implore young men in particular to do the research he's not your friend you know the policies that he's talking about will not help them in the economy the policies that he's talking about have nothing to do with them so the policies donald trump is talking about have nothing to do with young men it's not going to help young it's not going to help the economy for young men his policies aren't going to get better jobs for young men or help young men afford gas groceries a new home start a family yeah, those poly those all that fun, all that dancing, all those wrestling matches, all those podcasts. Donald Trump's not going to help young men. You know who is going to help young men? Kamala Harris. How's she going to help him? Kamala did what Kamala always does. She just put her head down and she went to work. I prom I swear to God, that's the last time. I swear that's the last. <laughs> that's the last. That's the last time uh, before I get complained. But that's it. They're trying. This whole toxic masculinity thing has backfired on the Democrat Party because men realize that testosterone is not toxic. Testosterone is not a toxin. It's a necessary part of your life. It's a necessary part of your upbringing. It's a necessary part of your being. Testosterone is important. We have, there is so much of an opportunity right now for young men to make their 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 voices be heard. And Charlie Kirk was uh, on X the other day and he just, he admitted, he went in there, he said, look, young men can drive this vote in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Michigan. Young men, single voters who are not early voters, young men, they don't go and vote early. They're waiting till election day, 
Hopefully they're not forgetting to vote on election day, but for whatever reason, we need them to get out there. If you know a young man between the ages of 18 and 34 and they haven't yet voted, odds are that young man is going to vote for Donald Trump and they have not yet voted. So you can fight for Donald Trump by helping that young man get to the polls tomorrow because that's really going to that's going to really help us. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who have glommed on to the Donald Trump narrative and the Donald Trump agenda, and they're not falling for Kamala Harris. They know that Donald Trump is a solid. In fact, Donald Trump got an endorsement, if you will, <laughs> from this is, my, this is one of my favorites. And this is why I say I'm going to miss this campaign. I'm going to miss this campaign so much. This is a campaign where Tony Hinchcliffe from Kill Tony was the catalyst that led to one of the greatest campaign events ever, which was Donald Trump in an orange vest doing a rally and a press conference from a garbage truck in Wisconsin. That was because of Kill Tony and Joe Biden and a bunch of other fantastic people in the Trump campaign. But th but th the squirrel, don't tread on me. The uh, owner, Mark Longo, the owner of, of Peanut the Squirrel, may he rest in peace, is meeting with Donald Trump. This squirrel getting seized from his home along with his friend, Fred the Raccoon, we don't want to forget about him, and being euthanized by the state of New York has reminded everybody just how out of control the government has become. Not just the federal government, but your state and local government. And fun fact, the state and local government in New York, where Peanut the Squirrel was murdered, are run by Democrats. This is one of the greatest campaigns we've ever had. I'm going to miss this campaign. And Sammy the Bull Gravano, mob boss, murderer, uh, author, and apparently podcast host now, Sammy the Bull Gravano came out with a somewhat interesting endorsement of Donald Trump. Now, here's my opinion. Trump is coming in for one reason. He's up in age. He wants to rebuild this country beautifully. And he wants to leave that as part of his legacy, he cares about his legacy. He don't care about money. He's a multi-billionaire. As much as they try to break him, he's got money. He's not worried about money. You can't bribe him. I know that as a kid growing up. I was in the mob. I tried to bribe him. Never worked. Never, never worked. And it was beneficial to him. He just wouldn't do it. That's Sammy the Bull Gravano <laughs> saying, look, I know for a fact Donald Trump can't be bribed because I tried to bribe him. And Donald Trump said, no, I'm not going to do it. Donald Trump can't be bribed. I went in there as a kid and I said, hey, Donald Trump, I got a, I got a deal. I got a proposition for you. Donald Trump said, no, no, I'm not going to. I can't do that. I can't do it. Stood up to the mob. Wouldn't take a bribe. If you're not going to take a bribe from the mob in New York when you're a real estate developer, you're not going to take a bribe from anybody.